Glue. It's what holds all our projects together. So it's a pretty important topic to talk about when it comes to making miniatures. And I just thought about how much dried glue there probably is just in this room. It's a lot. Today I'm going to talk about the glue that I use in my own miniature making. Disclaimer 1. This video does not contain all the glue knowledge in the world. There's a lot of glues that I have just never tried out. This is only going to contain the knowledge that I have from my 12, 12 plus years of experience in miniature making. So if you have something else you think I should try out, make sure to leave that in the comments. Disclaimer 2. Read every single label of every product you're ever going to try out. Labels, especially on glue, are really important to read because they have safety information and material information so you know if this is going to be a good glue for your project. Also, it may have warnings about latex or other allergies that you may have that I don't have. So even though I am telling you my experience with each glue, it's important for you to read that safety information for yourself every time. I can't stress that enough. And this is a great segue because if you ignore the directions or the safety instructions on glue, it can be the villain of your project. What is that a segue to? It's a segue to the fact that I'm going to be comparing each glue I talk about today to a Disney villain. Why? Uh, because it's fun and this is going to be a long video about glue and I think it, it keeps it interesting. It may not add that much information, but we like to have as much fun as we can here. But seriously, if you use a glue in the wrong way, it can be disastrous. So let's go ahead and jump in. These first eight glues I'm going to talk about are my starter glues, or glues you want to get to know as you're starting out in miniatures. In the description box below, I'm going to have a helpful PDF download that you can follow along with me if you would like to, or you can print it out at the end of the video and go back and take your own notes. The first glue we're going to talk about is Elmer's glue, which is probably a glue that everybody, even outside of miniatures, has heard of. It's a basic white PVA glue, and mostly everyone's used it, and typically it's not going to be all that detrimental to your project. Which is why I'm comparing this first glue to Lady Tremaine from Cinderella. Everyone's talking about it. The whole kingdom. There's two different main types. There's Elmer's Glue All and Elmer's School Glue. I highly suggest you go with the Glue All, but School Glue will still glue things together. Because this is a pretty thin formula, I find it to be a good glue to mix things into, such as sand or coffee grounds. In my recent plant room video, I mixed coffee grounds into the glue to make some soil for my plants. I've also mixed in sand for anything I thought needed a more rough texture. You can also mix in acrylic paint. For example, I've done this with black acrylic paint so that I have a black glue. It's also pretty easy to spread, so if you're needing to glue two large flat surfaces together, you can use Elmer's glue for that. I did that on all of my Beetlejuice walls. The next glue is going to be tacky glue. I would call this the artist's version of Elmer's glue. It's a bit stronger than Elmer's glue from what I understand. It's long lasting and tacky glue comes in several different forms. This is why I'm going to be comparing this one to the Evil Queen from Snow White. Begin thy magic spell. Oh, perfect disguise. <laughs> It's not just the bottle that comes in several different forms. For example, I have this bottle with the large lid and I just like to refill it with a larger bottle because this one is much easier to use and this cap gets lost every time. 
but it also comes in different formulas. For example, this one is fast grab, this one is super thick, and they even have tack it over and over, which is a glue that dries and then becomes sticky and then you can like unstick it and move it to other places. There are several more forms of tacky glue and it's something that you're just going to have to experiment with. Start with the original and if you find you want a little bit of something different, you want it to dry faster or you want it a bit thicker, you can try one of the other tacky glues. In this example, you can see the difference between tacky glue and Elmer's glue. Elmer's going to be thinner and it's going to run a little bit more. Both of these glues are white PVA glues and they are water-based. And this is why on some paper, you're going to see that it can mark your paper if you're using large amounts of glue. So in some instances, you may want to use very thin amounts or you may want to put it under something flat so it doesn't end up warping your material. Anything with water in it has the possibility to warp what you're working on if you don't secure it properly. Mod Podge is coming in as glue number three, and actually this glue also works as a sealant. I'm comparing this one to Randall Boggs from Monsters, Inc. Stop it! Simply because I always like to watch the Mod Podge slowly disappear as it dries. This is another white PVA glue and therefore it can warp your projects, so I highly suggest that you use something to keep it flat while it's drying both if you're using it as a glue to put two pieces together and if you're using it as a sealant on top of something else. It also comes in many different formulas. Personally, I would start out with the matte and the glossy, but uh, there's just they keep coming out with new stuff and I can't keep up, but these are the main two that I use. And I will let you know right up front, the glossy Mod Podge does not smell good. <laughs> This is another glue that is thin enough that you can mix it with other things. And so I have mixed some Mod Podge with black acrylic paint, which is a trick that I first saw off Black Magic Craft. And I really love this because you kind of have a base coat of black paint and Mod Podge all in one if you need to seal a project. Number four is one of my favorites. That's going to be wood glue. Wood glue comes in many different brands, so you might have to try out a different brand each time you need to buy wood glue to find the one that you like the most. I typically go with the Tight Bond Original. At first, I was going to compare this to Captain Hook, but I really couldn't find a good comparison. I was thinking like Wood Ship, Captain Hook, but it didn't really work, so I'm gonna compare wood glue to Mr. Smee. Hi. I love Mr. Smee and I love wood glue and Mr. Smee is really good at like trying to smooth things over and that's what I use wood glue for a lot. It works really well as just a glue to put two pieces of material together. However, I also use it to smooth out the surface of some kind of rough texture like a chipboard or wood. It can also smooth out some rough transitions. So I'm gonna show you an example of two pieces of chipboard that are glued together. I'm gonna to be putting wood glue over the transition, which is going to smooth it out. You can definitely see the difference once I paint it. Now you can even get more of an effect the more that you layer the wood glue. Wood glue is what I would call dimensional, so it can hold its shape a little bit more than Elmer's glue or tacky glue. I also use this on the walls of the captain's quarters to create a very distinct wood grain texture. I added glue on top of the beams and then just kind of made marks through the glue and that made it look as though it had a rough bark texture. So I highly suggest wood glue to be in your first miniatures glue kit. With glue number five, we're actually getting to our first glue that I would consider health dangerous. You have to be really careful with this one. And that's why I'm gonna go with a really dangerous Disney villain for this one. And that's gonna be Maleficent. Super glue is a cyanacrylate glue or CA glue, and it can be used in many different ways. However, it does have fumes, so I highly suggest using it in a well-ventilated area or with a face mask. 
On the chart that you can download, I put in all of my safety suggestions. However, as I said, listen well, all of you. Make sure to read the directions for yourself every single time. Super glue dries really fast, which can be really helpful, but it also does a few magical things. Okay, so it's really just science, um, but uh, it seems magical at the time. With super glue, you can buy something called flash tack, or it may have another name. As long as it says it's a super glue accelerator, it's basically just a little spray bottle that you can spray on the glue so that it dries instantly. Super glue can also be combined with baking soda, which will help you fill a crack or fill a space in some kind of project, and then you can sand it down. It cures immediately and is rock hard, so that can be really helpful in some situations. That was liquid super glue. Now I'm going to be talking about liquid super glue's cousin, the thicker super glue, which is gel. Gel super glue just seems to have a little bit more body. And that's why I'm going to be comparing this one to Ursula. Life's full of tough choices, isn't it? However, I feel like I end up reaching for the gel super glue a lot more than I reach for the liquid super glue. And that's because it just seems to stay in place wherever I put it. In this comparison, you can see how watery the liquid super glue is compared to the gel. The gel is going to stay where you put it, the liquid super glue tends to run, which means you have more of a chance of getting it on your skin. And if you get it on your skin, I just, those poor unfortunate souls. Along with super glue, you can buy some kind of solvent that will help you get super glue off of your skin. However, it's something you want to avoid completely. So I do suggest gloves if you have a chance of getting it on yourself. One of the main ways I like to use gel super glue is along with tacky glue that we talked about earlier. If I put super glue on one side and tacky glue on the other side and put them together, they make an almost immediate Bond. That's because the water in the tacky glue is reacting with the super glue to make that instant connection. So it's a really helpful way to work on something and continue to move a little bit more quickly, not having to wait for the gel super glue just to dry on its own. Glue number seven is hot glue. Can you guess which Disney character I chose for hot glue? I'll wait. That's right, Hades. Hades for hot glue because hot glue is hot, actually, temperature-wise. It is hot. I know! You know, I know, I got it. I got the concept. So hot glue can really be a help or a hindrance to your project, depending on how you use it. Traditional hot glue guns really have a wide nozzle and will put out a lot of hot glue for your project. When you're working on miniatures, typically you don't want that much glue and you don't want glue squeezing out on the sides. So I personally use this precision glue gun so much. I will have links to this glue gun and all the glues that I can find and link in the description box below if there's anything specifically that you wanna check out. However, this particular glue gun also comes with a temperature dial, which is really helpful. I've had a lot of glue guns in the past that are drippy glue guns, and that's because the glue is melting too quickly. On this one, you can adjust the temperature, so if you see some dripping, you can make it a little bit cooler and your hot glue will stop dripping. The major way that I use hot glue is as a stabilizer, I guess I would say. I don't want to trust hot glue completely on my projects. Especially since I live in a hot part of the country, if I have a project that's completely put together by hot glue, there is a chance that if it's outside or I'm transporting it somewhere, that glue can come loose and cause my project to fall apart. So I tend to trust tacky glue a little bit more. What I do is I take the tacky glue and cover most of whatever I'm going to glue together and I leave a couple spots open for the hot glue. Right before I'm ready to glue the two pieces together, I add in the hot glue drops and then put them together. The hot glue is going to take hold immediately and the tacky glue is going to dry over time. So the hot glue is helping me move through my project a little bit faster and the tacky glue is going to be my glue that's going to last over time and not be affected by the heat. 
There's so many different types of hot glue as well. I have some colored hot glue that I don't really use for miniature crafting, but is really fun with the kids if we have projects. Also make sure to beware of the temperature of hot glue. If you feel like your fingers are going to be really close to the nozzle, gloves might help keep you from getting a burn. The last glue in the starter glue section is going to be Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac I have actually had experience with for a while, but I really only thought it was for fabric. It wasn't until Darkest Raven Movie Minis suggested that I use it for other things that I really started to see the benefit of using Fabri-Tac. It can also be known as Fabri-Fix, depending on where you're buying it. The Disney villain I'm going to be comparing this to is Oogie Boogie. Well, well, well. What have we here? This stuff can really glob up and it does look like an oogie boogie on the side of your glue bottle. Also because, you know, oogie boogie is basically sackcloth holding bugs together, I thought it worked for a fabric based glue. I tend to refer to this as cold hot glue. It takes hold really, really fast and it is also dimensional. So if you put it somewhere and let it dry in that shape, it's going to pretty much stay in that shape. This is an acetone based glue. So you have to be very careful on the surface you're working on because it could mar your surface because of the acetone. Another helpful thing is if your glue is starting to not be as liquidy, you can add just basic acetone into your glue and it will help liquefy it again so that you can get a full use out of one bottle. In particular, I have found Fabri-Tac to be really helpful with putting foam board together. And originally I thought the acetone in the Fabri-Tac would melt the foam on the side, but it doesn't and it creates a really strong and quick bond between the two pieces. So there are some situations where I feel like hot glue is going to take hold too fast, but I still want a relatively faster grab than tacky glue. And that's when I'm going to grab my Fabri-Tac or Fabri-Fix. Next, we're going to be moving on to specialty glues. These are glues that I don't really have in my basic toolkit and I probably wouldn't buy unless I had a very specific reason to purchase them. Also, most of these glues are going to have a higher fume rate or danger factor. And so you really need to be careful about when and where you use them. And again, read all the labels. I'm gonna say that a lot. I'm sorry if it's annoying. <laughs> The first glue I actually don't have to show you because I haven't purchased it in a long time. It is the original Gorilla Glue. Now Gorilla Glue actually makes a lot of different glues, but the original formula for Gorilla Glue is incredibly strong. However, it's also incredibly annoying and that is why I'm comparing this one to Gaston. As you see, I've got biceps to spare. I used Gorilla Glue in the very beginning of my Adams Family project. Basically what you do is you take water and you wet both pieces of material that you plan to put together. Then you put the Gorilla Glue in between. The water I think activates the glue and the glue starts bubbling up. This creates an incredibly strong bond. So if you're wanting to put some large structural pieces together, this might be the way to go. However, you have to kind of babysit the glue and remove any of the bubbles and the excess glue that starts coming out of the crack that you glued together. If you don't, you're gonna be sitting there sanding it down quite a while once it's dried. I used this glue for the first part of my Adams Family project and then once I got towards the top of the project, I started using some other glues because I was just tired of it being so annoying. However, it is so strong. If you need something that strong, go for it. The next glue I have for you is two-part epoxy. This is going to be two different materials that you mix together to make a really strong glue. And for that reason, I'm gonna be comparing this to Prince John and Sir Hiss. Yes, my reluctant reptile. Not very effective on their own, but put them together and it can cause quite a bit of trouble. This is our first resin-based glue that I'm going to be talking about. You're gonna to wanna to use this again if you need a really strong bond between two pieces of material. I actually use this to try and make deck prisms for my captain's quarters and it really yellowed. So it's not a great resin for 
making like pretty things, but it was very strong and probably makes a really good glue. It says it bonds wood, metal, glass, foam, fiberglass, and more. So this is probably an all around super strong glue for whatever you need to glue together. Somewhere in the same category as our next glue, which is going to be UV resin. Now UV resin can be really pretty, but it can also really mess up your project if you're not quite sure what you're doing. So for that fact, I'm going to compare this to the Queen of Hearts. A little bit fancy, but also a little bit frightening. UV resin is going to be more of an exterior glue. If you put this between two opaque materials, you will not be able to get the UV light to the resin in order to cure it, and therefore it won't be an effective glue. So for example, recently I made two robots on a live stream and I had these wires that were coming out of the chest cavity. Once I had put the UV resin into the chest cavity and cured it, those wires aren't going anywhere. It can be really strong and effective in that way. It also works for making very small puddles and things along those lines. So you can essentially glue things inside of the UV resin. This is another one with fumes. So just make sure that you are protecting yourself and your hands. Anything with resin in it can really agitate your skin. And that's why gloves are so important. Even if you feel like you won't be touching the resin, this resin can kind of just it ends up on the bottle, it ends up, I mean, it just protect yourself. The next glue is another specialty glue, but not quite as dangerous as the resin glues. This is going to be the Zig two-way glue. It comes in several different pen shapes. However, I have the smallest pen here. It can work as a typical glue, or you can put it on something, wait a while, and then use it more like a sticker. So I'm gonna be comparing this one loosely to Corilla DeVille. Now don't forget it's a promise. See you in three weeks, cheerio. Because she's like a spider waiting for the kill. I just did that because there's waiting in the song and you have to wait if you want to use this as something you can peel off and stick in another place. And she has two different hair colors, so like two way, two, I don't know. That was a tough one. But that can be a really helpful glue if you're not quite sure where you wanna position something and you're just wanting to try a few things out. Also, the pin form is really helpful to get glue in some very small miniature places. All right, we're back into the vapor danger zone with contact cement. This glue specifically, you have to allow to dry before you can use it. So you put it on two different pieces of material, allow it to dry for about 10 minutes, and then you put the two materials together and they don't come apart again. And for that reason, I am going to be comparing this one to Dr. Facilier. Shake my hand. Come on, boys. Won't you shake a poor sinner's hand? Once you make a commitment or a contract with this glue, that's it. There's no repositioning it. You're done. You're not getting out of it. And I got friends on the other side. This could be really helpful if you're trying to glue something immediately. You know, you have it exactly planned out where it's going and it needs to have a strong hold right away or else it could possibly fall apart. I don't use this one a lot, but it's helpful when that kind of situation comes up. The next glue I am going to be talking about is rubber cement. This is kind of an interesting glue because this is a glue I remember from my childhood. I very distinctly remember a project using this glue all over. And I remember we got it on our hands and we played with it. And for that fact, I'm going to be comparing this one to King Candy. I'm not letting you undo all my hard work. On the outside, looks really kid friendly and you know, it has like a big brush inside of it that you can use to put your projects together. However, there's a lot of vapors that come with this glue. So 
On the inside, it can be a little dangerous. This one also messed up my desk mat where I put something to dry. So um, I really haven't found a lot of great uses for rubber cement. I purchased it to put some paintings temporarily up on the walls of my Adams Family house, but now I have found even more glues that are better for that. So I really wouldn't suggest this one unless you knew it was the perfect glue for something. Okay, next we have E6000. I'm sure you've seen this around in your local just general stores, dollar store, craft store. E6000 is everywhere. And that's because it's the glue everything glue. Anything you wanna to stick together is pretty much going to be stuck once you use this glue. For this reason, I'm going to be comparing this glue to Mother Gothel. Oh, great. Now I'm the bad guy. Be very careful with it. Right on the label it says industrial strength adhesive. For example, if you were working on a miniature project, say a tower, and you glued something to that tower, this glue would be like, You are not leaving this tower ever! Typically I reach for this glue if I don't think anything else is going to stick one object to another. This I also use for metal. In the past, I took a class from one of my friends, Barbara, and she taught us how to make a bed frame from metal. It's all wire and it's sticking together with E6000 glue. I would not trust super glue to do this. I would not trust tacky glue to keep it all together. By now, I feel like any of those glues, it would be falling apart. However, E6000, and this was several years ago, it is still stuck together and it is not going anywhere. The next glue is another one I have experience with, but I don't currently have, and it's going to be JB Weld. I used JB Weld to make a little metal chess set for my father. I just took little bits of metal and like they were like screws and nuts and bolts. It was a really cool project. Glued them together. The JB Weld works with metal beautifully. However, you can probably do the same with E6000, but I wanted to include it on the list because I did have experience with it, but the only reason I would go out and buy it is if I was exclusively gluing metal to metal and I needed it to stick forever. I'm comparing this glue to Doris from Meet the Robinsons. No, this can't be happening, no! Because it's really the only metal-based Disney villain I could find. And I like Meet the Robinsons. It's a fun movie. And the last glue on my specialties glue list is going to be plastic or styrene glue. Specifically, this one is called Mr. Cement Deluxe. However, I do know they come in different forms from different manufacturers. Typically, it is a very liquidy glue that comes with some kind of brush applicator. This is a resin-based glue. When you brush it on, it is not very sticky. It still just kind of looks like you brushed on water. There's a little bit of stickiness, but you have to position your pieces and let it dry completely. What is left behind is a little bit of resin in between the two plastic pieces that you put together that bind them. I'm gonna be comparing this one to Madame Medusa. Do you know what would make Auntie Medusa very happy? Simply because to me it looked like a nail polish bottle. My mind is just burned with that image of her taking her makeup off and so she just seems like really fancy, you know? So that's, that's why I chose her for this glue. It got harder the more glues that I wanted to talk about. I really don't think that this is a necessary glue to have unless you know that you're just going to be working with a lot of plastic. And if you're, not, if you're going to be working with a lot of plastic, that easily will sit until it's glued together. If you're wanting a quick glue with plastic, I'm highly going to suggest just going with super glue. It seems to work really well. And you can also use some of the other glues if you sand plastic and use the glue in between two pieces as long as there's a little bit of texture that the glue can hold on to. So if you're using a lot of plastic, you can pick this one up. 
If not, then I wouldn't worry about it. The last section of this glue list is going to be glues that I have or have used that I don't use anymore. There's just going to be two glues in this section and one of them is going to be glue sticks. I don't find glue sticks to be useful for much and this comes from four years of art teacher experience. I felt like every project that was put together with glue sticks eventually fell apart. I am going to be comparing this to Yzma. I suppose. None of her plans ever seem to work. And also she likes purple and I always think of those purple glue sticks. If you, you, if, if you must use glue sticks, stay away from the purple ones because sometimes that purple stays. Like if you glue two pieces of paper together and the purple glue is there, sometimes it does not go away. I'm just, I'm just saying. And the last glue on this list is going to be spray glue. I don't like to use spray glue. I am very sensitive to the smell that comes with spray glue. And I have had my own skin cells ripped off on the top of a spray glue bottle because it, it just felt like the only stickiness was on the bottle itself. It wasn't actually getting onto the project. For this one, I'm going to be using Madame Mim. Why, boy, I've got more magic in one little finger. Because she disappears sometimes, she has that ability to disappear, and I feel like sometimes when you start a project with spray glue, you're like, okay, everything's sticking together. And then you turn your back for a second and it just starts, the paper slowly starts like coming off of the wall that you previously thought was glued, just disappears. Now I know there's different manufacturers of both glue sticks and spray glue, and you may know of one that works really well for you. Go for it, use the glues that you love. These are glues that I tend to stay away from just because I can't trust them to stay glued down the line. The last thing I want is to finish a project and then have to go back and fix wallpaper or fix things that have fallen apart because my glue has let me down. The last glue I'm going to be talking about is this glue from Arteza, and that's because I have never tried this glue before. This was sent to me in a box for free from Arteza, and I just wanna show you some of the ways that I go about testing a new glue. So if you do come across something that I haven't talked about and you do wanna try it out, this is the way that I do it. First things first, we're gonna read the box and all the instructions that come with it. Honestly, there wasn't much information on the box itself. However, there is a QR code that took me to the Arteza website, which let me know that this glue is non-toxic. They also had several ways that they suggest using the glue pins. However, I am going to be doing my own experiments. I could tell from the start that this glue is pretty liquidy. However, there is quite a bit of it. It'll be interesting to see how long it lasts, depending on how fast the glue flows. I'm going to be using four different types of material, chipboard, cardstock, foam board, and some wood, and I'm going to be doing the same test with each type of material. I'm going to be gluing the two pieces on top, making sure that there are places where I can hold on to on either side. This way, once the glue is dry, I can try and tear them apart and see how strong the bond is. Immediately, I could see that the moisture in the glue had started to affect the cardstock, so this means it probably will warp very thin materials if they're not properly weighted while they dry. I also noticed my foam board was starting to move. It was slowly moving across my desk. My studio must be slanted. But this means that the glue is not tacking up very quickly, so I'm going to have to make sure it stays in place while it dries. 20 minutes later, I decided to check on the wood. I could tell that the wood was very wet from the moisture in the glue, so that's probably not great for wood material. I couldn't pull the two pieces of wood apart pulling sideways, however, trying to pull them up away from each other was very easy to pull them apart. This just means that my glue time might be a little bit longer, so I decided to wait another 20 minutes. At around the 40 minute mark, I decided to test them all again. 
The wood was the same story. I couldn't pull them apart horizontally. However, vertically, I could pull the wood away from it. And I just don't know if it's because the moisture had soaked into the wood, so the glue wasn't in between the wood pieces very much, or if it was affected by the fact that I had pulled it apart earlier in the test. So I may have to retest it with wood. However, with the foam board, it was very, very stuck. And the only way I could get it apart is to have one side of the paper that's on the foam board come off. So this was a very strong bond between the two pieces of foam board. Next, the cardstock was very warped. The moisture in the glue had caused it to dimple. However, it was stuck together. So it's not gonna be something I'm going to use to put my wallpaper on the wall, just because I don't wanna have to deal with the dimpling. With the chipboard, it was also a very strong bond, and the only way I could get it apart is for the actual surface of the material to rip off. I was pleasantly surprised by these findings, so I'm going to stick with using this glue with chipboard and foam board, and probably not so much with cardstock. However, I did notice that I am using the classic, and there's two other kinds of these glue pins. So I may have to try those and see if they work better with some other materials. Since testing this out, I've also used it to glue poster board onto cardboard, and that also worked really well. So it's gonna be a process of me figuring out what is going to be the ideal materials to work with this glue. So you'll have to let me know what Disney villain you think the Arteza glue sticks are going to be. Probably something like slimy and fluid. So maybe like flotsam and jetsam, maybe? Along with all of these glues, there's going to be countless glue accessories that you're going to come across. I don't suggest investing into any glue accessories until you know that that's a glue that you're going to be using quite a bit and you want a little bit more help to be successful with them. For example, there are glue gun stands that you can put on your desk to make sure that any glue dripping is going to go onto a surface that's easy to get it off of. There's brayers to help you keep things nice and flat once you glue something to something else. Mine comes with some like extra squeakiness, so that's fun. There's finger protectors such as these Mod Podge finger protectors. I think they'd be probably more helpful with like hot glue, but um, oh, it does say, it says hot glue finger caps. Okay, maybe I could have read the, the package. And a lot of miniaturists end up using these little bottles. They transfer their glue into the bottle so that they can get a finer line. You wanna make sure that you're using something with a stainless steel tip so that it doesn't rust over time. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you clean them pretty regularly or else the glue will dry up and ruin the bottle. But ultimately, over every single accessory that you're going to see in the glue aisle, I suggest toothpicks. The very simple, tiny, not flashy toothpicks. Have a set of toothpicks by your side and you can get a small amount of glue onto any miniature you're working with. So before you invest in any accessories, get some toothpicks and you'll be set. When it comes to glue, really the best thing you can do to grow your glue knowledge is just to experience the glues. You're gonna have to figure out what works best for what you enjoy working on. I am mostly working with paper, and so a lot of the glues I have are paper glues. However, you may find a whole other category that really works for the miniatures you enjoy making. So that's it for today's glue video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I try to put in as much information as I can, and also don't forget to print off this little PDF download. There may be more information on here than I actually said verbally because my brain. I also have a column on here where I talk about the different materials that I typically use the glues on. These may differ from all the materials that the glues claim that they work on because some of them I just don't find as effective. They may say they work on metal, but I probably wouldn't reach for that one for metal specifically. I also have my disclaimers on this chart to make sure that you are specifically reading all the labels, as I've said a million times, to protect myself and also to protect you. There's also going to be a second page which just gives you a few little tips over how to use a specific type of glue. So be sure to check that out if you're really wanting to get into learning more about glue and how to use it in your projects.
I also highly suggest that you continue this chart if you try a new glue that I haven't talked about. You can add to it, write down all the safety factors, and then write down what you found it helpful for. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I think I said all of the Disney villains. Was that helpful? I don't know. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure you clean them pretty regular. I can't say regularly, regularly. And a lot of, and, and I have had my own skin ripped off on the sprayer part of a spray. <laughs> can't even talk about it. Maybe I should turn the microphone towards myself. Professional. Both of these glues, just dust. Oh. <laughs>